Can taking folic acid actually help with erectile dysfunction? Hi guys, I'm Dr. Kidd, a board certified family medicine physician, and in this video, I'm gonna go through some scientific data that shows that maybe there actually could be some benefit in taking folic acid to improve erectile function. So how does folic acid actually help with erectile function? Well, there's been some evidence to show that folic acid may actually play a role in the metabolism of an important chemical in erections, nitric oxide. The function of nitric oxide is that it dilates vessels to the penis, which therefore increases blood flow to the penis, which therefore helps with getting and maintaining an erection. So there is a plausible mechanism of how folic acid might actually help with getting erections, but what does the scientific data actually say? Well, there was a large systematic review done in 2021 that investigated this question. A systematic review is when a group of researchers get together and comprehensively go through all the available evidence on a particular topic, synthesize all this information, and then try and provide a conclusion or a recommendation for what they found. Three different types of studies were found when they did this systematic review. The first type of studies that they found were those that were comparing folic acid levels in healthy individuals versus those that had erectile dysfunction. The second type of studies were those that were comparing erectile function before and after folic acid therapy. The last study was a randomized controlled trial that compared folic acid versus placebo in the treatment of erectile function. Starting with the first group of studies that compared the healthy individual's folic acid levels with those with erectile dysfunction, six studies were found. Patients were determined to have erectile dysfunction if they met a certain score on a validated questionnaire, the International Index of Erectile Function. What they found when they combined all the results of all these studies was there was an association between the severity of erectile function and the levels of folic acid in the blood. An important concept here to understand is the difference between association, sometimes otherwise known as correlation, versus causation. To give you an example of what I mean, suppose a study showed that there was an increased correlation between the sale of ice creams and the sales of air conditioning units. So as the sales of ice creams increased, so did the sale of air conditioning units. Now obviously the sales of ice creams does not directly cause the sales of air conditioning units or vice versa. This is because there's an independent factor, likely increasingly hot weather, that is responsible for this correlation. Therefore, although erectile dysfunction has been shown to be associated with lower levels of folic acid, it's unknown whether these lower levels are actually a cause of erectile dysfunction. The second type of study compared erectile function before and after folic acid therapy. This meant that they got the patient to do the same standardized questionnaire before taking any folic acid, then they gave patients folic acid for a certain period of time, and then they got them to repeat the questionnaire after the folic acid to see if there was improvement in erectile function. What they found generally across these studies were as you gave folic acid to patients, their erectile function did actually improve. So does this give us the evidence we need to give folic acid to every man with erectile dysfunction? Unfortunately, despite these findings, it's still not strong evidence, particularly in the area of erectile dysfunction. This is because it's been shown repeatedly in studies of erectile function that even placebo can cause a large treatment effect. What that means is, even if you gave the patient a sugar pill, they often have improvements in erectile dysfunction, even though they're not taking any active treatment. So it's difficult to know whether the improvements in these studies were due to the folic acid or due purely to a placebo effect. The best way to know whether folic acid actually helps with erectile dysfunction is to perform what we call a double-blinded randomized controlled trial. The way you do this is you get a group of people with a population of interest, in this case, patients with erectile dysfunction, you randomize them into two groups. The reason you randomize is to ensure that both groups are similar to minimize confounding factors on the results. Then you need to give one group of patients folic acid and another group a placebo, but the pill looks exactly the same as the patients that are taking folic acid. Then you need to ensure both the participants and also the investigators, the ones that are providing the treatment and also the ones that will be scoring the outcome measures, do not know who is taking the placebo and who is taking folic acid hence the double-blind part of the study. This double-blind approach to a study helps to negate any placebo effect and also any bias from the investigators who know who's taking the active treatment versus placebo. So did the systematic review find any double-blind randomized controlled trials that could give us more confidence in recommending folic acid to help with erectile dysfunction? Unfortunately, only one such study was found and this study compared folic acid plus tadalafil, a medication commonly used for erectile dysfunction, versus placebo and tadalafil in 176 diabetic patients. The study did show that patients taking folic acid plus tadalafil did have more improvements in erectile function than those taking placebo and tadalafil. This was probably the best level evidence in this entire systematic review that folic acid may actually be beneficial for erectile dysfunction. However, to confirm this finding, you will need to do more of these studies and reproduce the same result and also reproduce this to the general population and not only in diabetic patients. This is because if you only have studies in patients with diabetes, you don't know whether you can extrapolate these results to the general public. So overall, in summary, should you take folic acid for erectile dysfunction? Although there seems to be a correlation between folic acid levels and erectile dysfunction, 
More high quality randomized controlled double blind trials are required to confirm whether folic acid is actually helpful for erectile dysfunction. Further studies are also needed to give us the optimal dosing that's required of folic acid to help patients with erectile dysfunction as well. However, the side effects of folic acid are generally considered to be low, and if you have tried traditional treatments such as PDE5 inhibitors, or you have a personal preference to not take these medications and want to try a supplement, it would not be unreasonable to trial folic acid in the treatment of erectile dysfunction. Have you ever wondered whether Cialis or Viagra is better for erectile dysfunction? Well, I answer this question in this video here. You can check it out. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.